All right, guys, let's go ahead and read part of lesson three. The question, the key concept that we are going to address in this part of the chapter will be how does energy move in an ecosystem? So how does energy move in an ecosystem? Think of an ecosystem. That ecosystem might seem peaceful. If you visit though, you will notice that it is full of movement. Birds squawk and beat their wings. Plants sway in the breeze. Insects buzz. Animals run over leaves. All organisms require energy to move. Growth, reproduction, and other life function requires energy. Most of the energy for life on earth comes from the sun. In a moment, we'll see why we can't say all. Because there's a little thing called chemosynthesis that we're going to learn about in a bit. Energy does not cycle through the ecosystem like matter does. So it doesn't go like carbon and nitrogen and hydrogen and water from the earth to the atmosphere and back down. Energy flows in one direction. So that's going to be a question that is on your uh, study guide. In most cases, energy flow starts with the sun. It moves from one organism to another organism. Most organisms get energy by eating other organisms. Organisms can change energy into different forms of energy. Not all the energy an organism gets is used for life processes. Some is released into the environment as thermal energy. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. Its form can change though. This idea is called the law of conservation of energy. We've had that talk um, in the fall when we had our energy unit. Let's go ahead and change this. Okay, producers make things. Living things that make their own food from materials in the environment are called producers. Most of these producers use the process of photosynthesis. Some use the process of chemosynthesis. Photosynthesis. Plants, algae, and some bacteria use photosynthesis to make their food, as shown below. Photosynthesis is a series of chemical reactions that convert light energy, water, and carbon dioxide into the food energy molecule glucose and give off oxygen. This process is part of the carbon cycle that you read about earlier in this chapter. Though sometimes producers are also known as autotrophs. Self feeders. We are not a producer. Chemosynthesis. Some producers use chemosynthesis to make food. Chemosynthesis is the process which producers use chemical energy in matter rather than light energy and make food. Chemosynthesis can occur on the deep ocean floor. Hydrothermic vents are outlets for compounds that contain hydrogen and sulfur as well as thermal energy from inside earth. Chemosynthetic bacteria that live there use the chemical energy in the compounds and produce foods, which is why we can't say that all of the producers get their energy from the sun because we have a little bit of um, chemosynthesis going on. Okay, So consumers, this is everything else. Consumers do not make their own energy-rich food. They get their energy by consuming or eating other organisms. Consumers can be classified by the type of food they eat. The groups of consumers include herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, and detritivores. 
herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. Herbivores eat only producers. Only producers. A deer eats only plants, so it is an herbivore. A rabbit is an herbivore. Carnivores eat other animals. Lions and wolves are carnivores. Omnivores eat both producers and other consumers. A bird that eats berries and insects is an omnivore. A bear is an omnivore. Detritivore. Detritivore get their energy by eating the remains of other organisms. Some detritivores, such as insects, eat dead organisms. Detritivores, such as bacteria and mushrooms, feed on and help decompose dead organisms. So this is... Um, the idea. These are also known as decomposers. They're super important in with that nitrogen cycle and that carbon cycle because they're going to break down dead organisms. They feed on dead organisms and release the energy back into the soil, release the carbon and the nitrogen back into the soil. They are often called decomposers. They produce carbon dioxide that enter the air. Some decayed matter enters the soil. In this way, detritivores help recycle nutrients through the ecosystem. They also help keep dead organisms from piling up in the ecosystem. So if we did not have these decomposers, decomposing these trees and plants and dead animals, um, and breaking them down and returning their nutrients to the soil. Now they get their energy um, from those dead organisms, but in the meantime, they are returning the nutrients to the soil. We would have this huge pile of dead plants and animals piling up. So the decomposers are a super important part of our ecosystem. Okay, so that's as much as we are going to read today. So let's take, and there's that uh, photosynthesis. Um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit with my lesson that I will um, record in just a moment. So as far as what you can do um, on your outline notes is A. Whoops, let's get rid of that. We need a highlighter, don't we? How does energy move in an ecosystem? So one, two, three, all the way down here through five. So this is what I need you to um, complete today, all right? All right, take care, bye-bye now.